In uh, 1975, I met a rolfing practitioner and I uh, received the rolfing 10 session series from her and it completely transformed my posture. If I could demonstrate it, I used to look like this. And it, it is a great pleasure to be in this body. It's not painful. It's easy to support myself. I don't have to work at my daily movements. They're much more fluid. Well, I've, I've been involved with the osteopathic profession for over 20 years and uh, have been very interested in how, what the mechanisms of action are of different forms of manipulation and manual therapy. And uh, rolfing is a very interesting form of, of therapy to me uh, because of its emphasis on my, uh, on the myofascia. Currently, do you have a, a pain of some sort? I, I have some pain in my legs okay. that I've told Debbie about. So should we start a session? Sure. Great. So Patrick has told me that he rose and that he has a lot of tightness in his, his hamstring. So one way that we have to work with that and one way I think about it is that the fascial uh, connection goes from the hamstrings to uh, the ischial tuberosity by way of the sacral tuberous ligament, it blends in with the sacral fascia, up all the way into the back and neck. So we can track a strain or a pull all the way through the system. So when I'm working on hamstrings, I'm thinking also and trying to feel also what is happening in the rest of the system. And sometimes people will feel that uh, as well in their own body. So I'm gonna do a little test. Patrick is pretty flexible probably stretches a lot. Okay, so put your hands on your knee here for support and just put a gentle traction toward you. I'm gonna work a little down this way. And let me know if anything I'm doing is, is feels like too much at one time. You have to be a little careful here because it's it can be really tender. And if you don't move too quickly on fascia, it will stretch without being painful. So let's have you, yeah, that's better. Does that feel a little looser to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get the other side. Not being painful. You have to be a little careful here because it's, it can be really tender. And if you don't move too quickly on fascia, it will stretch without being painful. So let's have you, yeah, that's better. Does that feel a little looser to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get the other side. You have to be a little careful here because it's, it can be really tender. And if you don't move too quickly on fascia, it will stretch without being painful. So let's have you, yeah, that's better. Does that feel a little looser to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get the other side. Okay, let's bring this this way. I'm going to start a little at the top here. I'm using not my elbow, but the broad part of my forearm. It gives a broader uh, contact with that. When you're thinking broad and thinking through layers, it gives you that broader contact. Whereas a sharper contact is A, more painful and B, less effective. Tender. Mm -hmm. 
our breathing. That's great. It's a little tighter on this side, feels like. When you switch the other direction, it might be easier. And just gently traction that knee toward you just a little. That's it. One is the older of the two hips. This one's about uh, 10 months older than this one. Did you have a hip replacement? I have two hip replacements. Two? Oh, okay. You're doing great. Good flexibility. Yeah. Hold here. Looks like you've had knee surgery. and Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dense right there. Now, let's see how this does. You know, it's still a little tight on the inside hamstring. You're feeling that? Oh, yeah. So put your hands here. And I could feel that when I moved um, Patrick's. I think I'm going to just use a little. It's okay here. Right along that line there. Mm -hmm. You can feel where the fascia gets denser and, and, and tighter. And again, if you're not too fast with it, it will stretch without being uh, nearly as uncomfortable. Okay. Let's see. That's better now. So uh, Patrick reports feeling looser in his hamstrings, and so I want to know, Patrick, how is that feeling up? Because sometimes when one part lets go, the other part will feel tighter. How's your neck and your back uh, feel? Neck feels okay. It's okay. All right. So when I'm going to work on someone, I give uh, I get a complete medical history, and I ask them for any accidents, injuries, major illnesses they've had if they have any stress going on in their life right now. And that helps me to understand the history of the fascia because injuries show up in the fascia. Old injuries, they don't go away. They, uh, the fascia actually changes to compensate for imbalances in your body. Okay, so if you have an injury, say you sprained your right ankle, you're gonna lean to your left as you walk for quite a while. And in the process, uh, the fascia gets denser on that side. So even when you come back to the right side, it's not going to completely even out. So what we do is try to make that balance and function more even. Hello, I'm Suzanne Deason. I've been a student and teacher of yoga for many years now, based on the system of Master Yogi BKS Iyengar. One of the major contributions of Mr. Iyengar has been to introduce props into the practice of yoga. Props are designed to help people, no matter what their level of fitness or flexibility, enjoy the full benefits of yoga practice. And that is especially true in the practice of restorative yoga. Restorative yoga offers poses that are physically passive, 
but amazingly effective and powerful. Simple back bends, forward bends, and twists gently stretch the muscles and squeeze the organs of the body, releasing impurities and allowing them to absorb rich, oxygenated blood. Inverted poses use the natural power of gravity to enhance the body's ability to exchange fluids that pool in the limbs and circulate them back through the heart more effectively. The use of props in restorative yoga helps to properly support the natural curves of the body. This will help ensure that the body and mind are not distracted with tension, which will in turn help you to completely relax and allow the power of the pose to fully work for you. Our bodies have a miraculous ability to heal. All we need to do is give them the proper environment in which to do so, which includes the correct use of props. In this program, I will introduce you to four basic restorative props and their benefits. Then a little later, I'll demonstrate how each prop can be used with some basic restorative poses. The first and most fundamental prop is the non-slip yoga mat. If you're practicing on a hard surface, this mat will provide a layer of cushioning as well as a good temperature barrier from the floor. The non-slip mat will also help make sure that your feet and hands and other props stay firmly in place and keep your body in proper alignment. If you feel you need additional cushioning, you might want to use a second mat. I know that many of you practice at home on carpet, which can provide cushioning. Nevertheless, I always recommend the use of a non-slip mat to ensure the maximum stability for your hands and feet and insulation from the cold floor. The most versatile prop is the blanket. This is everyone's best friend. Depending on how you fold it, it can provide many degrees of support to fine tune your poses. The key to making the blanket work is the fold. Folding the blanket is an art. A well folded blanket truly enhances your experience. It's important that your blanket is folded very neatly and smoothly. Always begin with a rectangular fold. From here, you can create a long rectangle. This provides a